And as they said on the desk, the fact that Heroic start on the T side may not bode very well for them as Astralis' CT side is known for being so, so very solid. And May just kicks things off with a briskly put in one tap. s attack now lighting up the scoreboard with two of his own. And just like that, the round's done. <laughs> They've only lost two HP collectively. Astralis off to a cracker. Or maybe zero. Like that, that was how this map used to work. I'm, I'm thankful for the changes that were made. It's made it an exciting map to watch. Now... Astralis have gone very heavy on the rifle. Great for winning the round, but it means they have to keep things nice and clean. Glaive, he's looking to get aggressive here and has device alongside him. Not a kill in two rounds for the side of Heroic, and Astralis are here to play. With a, a couple of 16-7 victories going back to Pro League uh, Season 12. So that, that should at least make you feel a little bit better, but it could also mean that it's been coming. An S-Tag... Already going to be kicking things off Dupree as well with the SMG. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Astralis have been very good at proving stats wrong so far this tournament with uh, obviously Zywoo's 91.7% not going too well when it came to nuke. But uh, we'll see. Because this is already a bit damning going into their first fire round. It's looking so clean. Dupree already and adding another to the death toll after his MP9 gets upgraded to an NK. It's going to go walking through. All right. Maybe a little bit much for my liking, but hey, he's feeling confident. Was Dupree yesterday that was really leading the charge alongside the vice. And yeah, as you highlighted, Tom, only three or so weeks ago, it was actually Astralis on the receiving end of the battering. They lost Nuke to the hands of Heroic 16-7. Astralis have a 93% win rate on this map. They have one loss, and that is against Heroic. Now they're Already very close to doing better than they did last time, Vince. And this is a much faster take. This is what I love to see with this heroic roster. Dupree didn't even notice they'd walked into the site. I don't know if the grenades shrouded his judgment a little bit, but that's round done already. This team has no problems when it comes to rebounding. So definitely don't write them off. And that round is more indication as to exactly why that needs to be taken into account. They do say three guns and because of how flawless these rounds have been. Astralis have tons of cash at their disposal to allow him the opportunity to try and fire out. We've already seen Device in this very position earlier on with an M4. This time it's the AWP and it's the same result again. He tries to repeat, but the next two kills go the way of Heroic. And now they look to try and rummage through the smoke. Glaive tries to pincer into action with a double spray, but he only can get one. And now Dupree stands up, tries to deliver, but it's him next on the chopping block, leaving Esetag one on three. He's dropped the bomb down, but his head gets cleaved off and Heroic strike twice in a row have prominent T sides. Like, this is not a weakness for either of these sides. Now, a fast pace change, something that's loved by the side of Heroic and something I love to witness as well. Two instant frags. You have double ops, you say? Is that something you want to be bringing into this round? Well, it doesn't matter. You've got no opportunity to use them. In fact, one of them's already hit the deck and they're hunting these frags now. They've had enough of Astralis holding on to their weaponry. They're looking to try and shut them out con with economy as well. But his teammates are doing more than their fair share of the lifting. And on device, joined alongside Glaive at the back of CT spawn, will be pressured. There's more than enough money for Heroic to run in. They could even lose all three of their players at this point, and it wouldn't be the worst case as long as they can take one of these guns away. But device is holding on. Even with the HE landing on top of him, he still will stand, edging his way downstairs. May come head to head with Glaive momentarily, checking his angles, making sure all those angles are covered, but in doing so, gives his back up to Glaive and gets punished. The rest of Heroic are anticipating Dupree's position. HE behind the Molotov. He never had a hope of getting any frags. He was trying to bite them out, but May just is bring into action. He's got himself two at the back of the site, and Glaive with the rotation takes down an extra two for a 3k. Even less likely. It's a shame it doesn't really work out for them, but they have stacks of cash. And on the other side, Magisk is now down. What is a shotgun? Device, however, is going to be the one to get the opener. But Tesla has been able to take position over him. It doesn't seem to matter, though, with Device landing almost every single shot he's given. S-Tag tries to spray them down and does a hell of a lot of damage. 
But the bomb is going to be planted. Well, that's money secured at least for Heroic. The round, however, looks unlikely. It does look unlikely, but it's not as if there's a ton of incendiaries or HEs that they can burst back into the site with. So Ston and Burrup's low HP may not end up mattering a huge amount if they can get those crisp one taps into effect. Down though, XM <laughs> is tailor-made for these kind of incursions. And will be invaded again, Burrup. Using that 20 HP to devastatingly storm effect before Dupree spins around, takes him down. Check the time. It's low. Cadian could feasibly pull this one off. Spray's not on point, though. He gets punished. It's super close, but Astralis will just about get the defuse. This could create quite an awkward situation because he's managed to bypass the vice without him realizing and storm well. He just about gets away with that kill. The problem is the vice is going to get one for free. They've managed to sneak past him, but he's also found a loophole within the defense. And actually, Device has given the information to Debris that they could have heaven control. They've somehow made this one work for them, and they're starting to clean things up, Vince. It leaves Storm, the only man with a kill in this round for his side. It is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you're painting the picture, Tom. It's, it's bleak at best, isn't it? Even if he can somehow get a plant down with all of the CT staying together on the upper side, of course, he does have the bomb. He wants to try and nullify a couple of these players okay. down. I love the idea. He can get a plant off the back of this in amongst the smoke. But again, a single bullet and he's gone. In actual fact, he gets denied. As do Heroic, it will be 10-5 to Astralis after a 5-0 lead. Yeah, and this is their pick. Something also to mention just slightly. We're very lucky. We've got the three best European teams. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, device, take take the scene. You, you've you've got my attention, that's for sure. Let's see what he could do with it. Those were there's a reason you've dropped this guy a P250, right? Like that was ridiculous. Thankfully Cadian's come along and said, <laughs> okay, that's quite enough of that. And he even gets two back himself. They've made this pistol round very interesting indeed. And Barup has spotted them rotating back towards the A side. In fact, they run into him once. He comes back round and they run into him again. He really is playing a game of ring around the rosy. And he's actually going to be there once more. <laughs> Hashtag finally puts him down. Uh, it's like there's two of him. There's twins of Barup that are both trying to fight in the server at once. But eventually it's left onto Tessus. A poor game from him so far. 2-14. and 14. Someone we need to see step up if they are going to make this grand final. A pistol victory might be enough to do it, but they're both waiting around this corner. He needs two quick taps, and instead, Glaive is going to close this. I love that cam. Stout trading up to the AK. Still going aggressive as well. Love this. Absolutely love this play. So many teams against Astralis. Retreat into their shell and just hope for the best. But Heroic are taking the initiative, trying to make Astralis a little bit more uncomfortable, playing the mind games. But this could backfire. He goes out one too many times and he's been punished. And that gives a chance for Astralis to get back in. But the door's been closed and it's Burrup that slams it shut with his M4. Device and Esetag with 38 seconds trying to retrieve the bomb and also the round. Device though does go into Burrup. And with 30 seconds now on a 2 on 3 this is still winnable on Astralis. For Heroic, it gives them at least a little bit of a breather. They will have enough to juggle some weaponry around and at least invest back into this one. But for Astralis, they've, they've got rounds to play with. They don't have to risk everything. They're not in a situation where they have to try. Smoke into his eyes. But he can hold position and allow Cadian now to rotate. I say hold position. He's actually pushed behind the back of them. And another two kills for Tessis. He could be in for more, but Magus gone the drive-by. Takes off his head. It's at the cost of 90 HP. The bomb oh. was dropped. That's information. Oh. Down wants the knife. He wants oh. to stand, but the vice <laughs> spins around. He saves himself the embarrassment, but he will not save himself in terms of his life. He goes down. And keep in mind, this was a forced buy for Astralis. They have no money left in the bank. I love the audacity to do that to Potter said uh, down and I can understand that uh, she might not get to AWP as much as she used to if that's the case because he's pretty meme of one. I think I'd take Cadian. I think I'd play much better with Cadian like uh, bigging me up. Brop though. Gonna meet a nasty fade but here he is again. It's a TK in the mix but Storm will claim four. 
It is a ridiculous round from him once again, just spraying down the investment from Astralis, and they're going to need a moment. They're going to need some time to reset after that one. The young star. Cadian, different angle. His approach, untenable, goes under the radar, playing incognito. And now he snatches in for the opening pick. And once more, Heroic have the advantage. Once more, maybe they can bring Astralis down to their knees. And once more, Sound is delivering. Bar up on the cross. Glaive was never checking the angle. Too many other ones for him to watch out for. And it not only could be a round, it's going to be a clean one. They only lose one player in the process. They smell their prey, but what they don't realize is he's backed them into a trap. Kadian now waiting with the AWP and with 30 seconds left, even a few slip-ups coming in. Pressure pushed onto this A site and Nico's waiting for it. They have a crossfire set up. In fact, two players just waiting down below. They bred this perfectly, Vince. It's left all onto the vice once again. He has 12 seconds and it's turned into a save. At every turn, Astralis meet a heroic stack. They played that round to perfection and now they take the lead. And with 22 seconds, Astralis needs to start making a move. Nico narrowly misses out the head. That could be costly. It's the vice that still stands and actually <laughs> drills him through the wall in the head. And with that pick, that should be the round going the way of Astralis. And you go back to the what ifs. Can you take some weaponry away? Can you even upgrade to an AK? It's a small victory, but it's something nonetheless. And they are looking to try and hold these remaining players in. Tessus, he goes hunting, but he's eventually shot down. No real extra damage done, and we go back to the rule up until this point. They've typically lost one or two in their endeavors downstairs. Down, though, up close. Flashbang comes out. M4 is good. He has surrounded by players, but Nico has his back covered, and he still stands for a little bit longer. Even though he's fallen, the damage has been done. It's been briskly and swiftly put into the opposition Danes, and our Magisk in a one-on-four no control over the bomb. No idea where all these CTs reside. Now knows that Tess is to his right-hand side. Takes him off. Executes him down. 46 HP. Separating mages. Separating Astralis. And a map point for Heroic. And they deliver. Not allowing Heroic to get comfortable. Not allowing them to get set up in their positions. Tess is locking it out through lockers. But actually, he gets shoved in there. And Dupree the bully... Now changing his options to go up into heaven and try and rain down some fire onto the defenders on a site. Spotting another player. Not only has he got himself two kills, he's got tons of information and device. I mean, no chill to Stown and there's Nico. They just drop down one by one and they are being perforated where they stand. It's looking good to go overtime again. Unless Burrup can pull off something truly miraculous. What? The device three no scopes in the same round. Now they're slowing right down. And the thing is, once you commit to aggression, the only real response is more aggression. And because of that, they're now two men down with the same result. It's down and Nico. Already has been silenced. Kading could flick onto Magus. I was wondering if he'd come out second best in that, if timing would work against him because the smoke was about to clear. 30 seconds, Tessis, who moved outside of ramp, now goes back in there again, but it's Dupree, who has found his form once again with the AK. Insta headshot, Cadian through the fire, through the flames, into a spray bullet, and Astralis claimed first blood in overtime, and the smiles are back again. He wants to lock it down with the XM. It was something like six rounds in a row where he failed to get a frag last time around, but he may be able to jump in here. Actually goes back to try and pick up the assault rifle, decides against it. Only three players left and 12 seconds allocated to Astralis, who looked to dip down onto the site. All three players weakened, very close to their demise. Device is still waiting outside. The bomb does get planted. This is where Device's position could be oh. so brutal, but Burrup spotted him. This is where he wished he had anything but the <laughs> XM. Fortunately, though, Cadian comes to his rescue. There's a boost up. A bit what of an off this? angle you probably don't expect to be the CTs, but they have spotted it and they have dwindled away at Dupree and now Esetag. There will be no clean sweep. It was looking grim, but Heroic do bounce back. 
anticipating that this wall of smokes may very well yield a push into his angle. He has the perfect angle to deal with this, but it's a bit oh. slow. From considering he's on 31 kills, you really expect him to land that. As the target and Glaive both come in with frags, but just proving that the vice is mortal yet. Magus, big entry onto Tessus, back into the site again, but not anticipating that he gets peeked simultaneously from the doors and behind Silo. And Glaive has taken this momentary chaos to try and get up close and decon. He needs Dupree to lend him a massive helping hand. He sticks on the bomb. He doesn't have a kit though, and he gets punished. Kadian comes in with a frag. He's been tagged out, but goes for a re-peek and will reap the rewards. Heroic with a map point. Or up, it seems like he's just gonna go barreling onto the site, but there is a man they might not expect to be here so soon, but what? He is saved by the bar. Glaive goes down, it's another man lost. A man advantage kept by Heroics down, however, has fallen. The peak comes back in for Magisk over the last few rounds, he's gone huge. And this time, he gives them an advantage in the retake. No utility and the lack of kit starts to come to the forefront. Astralis know they have to mix up the pace. They have to get up close. Cadian, plenty of utility, including a smoke and a molotov. Borup, push the back of the side, gets triple peaked, and it's Magisk who gets the third. Cadian now needs to rip around the corner, needs to have impact. He's waiting. He's waiting so long. He finally gets the frag, but it's not going to be good enough. And we move to second overtime. Do they bypass this double-pronged threat? No, Device, just wide peaks, wide swings. If they fully bite down on Device's position, keep in mind that Glaive is laid in wait, cunning. Can I even calculate it? Device is still drawing fire to his location, still standing, still delivering. And even though Dupree has fallen to the hands of Nico, they're still in a bit of trouble. Device just isn't missing now. Making amends from a few rounds ago, but Heroic sneaking under the radar are still doing a bunch of damage of their own accord, and Device comes in with his 4K. He's landed 37 kills. 20 to 18, Heroic have still had to take some serious concessions going into this round, but it looks like they're going to try and build in to a fast, aggressive play. Magic is already gone, and Tessus with a double entry. Make that a third come up for Stown. Device this time will miss, and that might be the end of him. S-Tag, he may be off to Cloud9, but this time... And we did see Stown turn around for at least a second. I have a question that he might have actually spotted his opponent, and look at them all just start to swarm in. It is going to be around at least again the same result. Device, though, this is quite a bit of ground. Storm, however, waiting for him on the other side. A double orb thrown in from Heroic. A, a little bit of a different spice to this round as they've changed things up completely. This isn't something we've seen from them whatsoever, but a gimmick that could steal them around. That's exactly what they need right now. Down the vent they go. There's another orb there, and the no scope landed as well. Or even the quick scope, whatever you want to call it. It's left on to Dupree. No one can deny this just yet, but they are going to get very, very close on the approach. Molotov behind him. Needs to stand his ground. He knows every second he stays out in the open is one closer to death. And Astralis now have to play as a trio and look to puncture through into the site. The bomb's also dropped and then amongst all of that sound now shows his hand again. He may not have got the kill onto Glaive, but he did so much damage to him that another bullet and he is going to be laid down permanently. Test is straight back in for another one. Esetag just doing his due diligence to make sure these angles don't have a CT that's found the bomb. And that's really the only thing that is going in favor of Astralis. Everything else is stacked against them. Tessis laid in wait. Down on Glaive. 10 seconds left. Esetag <laughs> needs to try and somehow clutch this out <laughs> with no time and no hope. And Heroic with another map point. Not imposing their will, but just desperately clambering on for extra lifelines. Here comes the play. It could be the final one of Nuke. And Burrup holds on for two kills single-handedly. Maybe taking this away from Astralis. Magus one on four. He's got the first, but his position is known. And Tessie stands up. Tall delivers the headshot. That's all she wrote for Nuke. Heroic have took their choice.
Vitality wait in the wings. I'm sure they have an eager eye across to this very match to get some intel. Rock starting on the CT side. A good chance to post up a good start. But Dupree joined alongside the rest of Astralis, making their moves up middle, where there is a four-player stack. Crossfire, devastating positions, and Cadian's got both of them. They're not even sure about these players up close, and now they find out firsthand as bullets pass through their faces. And not a single casualty lost for Heroic. And not really a chance for Borup to get too much done out of this. Minimal damage has been inflicted up until the moment where Dupree takes a ton through the smoke. But Kadeen and Borup also coming out worse for wear. So is Magis. Just trading damage, trading blows. But Astralis now, at the back of the site, have three incendiaries that they have to deal with. Kadian, Tessis, Nico, all of an incendiary. They have a HG on Nico. This is a very retakeable round. If they can get those grenades in prime position, this is where things could get really scary, and that's why Dupree gets mollied out of position. Device and S attack holding it down. Glaive trying to spray through the smoke, but it's now down to Storm. He comes out second best. He has no HP to justify this. Wants to hold on to the AK, neutralizes Magisk on his way out, and he will live. But. Baroque have conceded the round. AK versus five. In the form he's in, he might even pull this off. There's two already sprayed in. Any would be a bonus at this point. You get three, single-handedly repelling three of the oncoming Astralis players. And we spoke about a 5v5 retake being rough. This should be doable. Baroque taking a little bit of damage, but Esetag is being burnt to a crisp. He's down to five. And they have only a Molotov to contend against this push from the CTs. We'll be tossed out towards the ruins once Esetag feels comfortable to throw it in. But there's one in return. And oddly enough, Burp actually pushes that molly. Time is dwindling away. Dupree taking down. Burp can now reposition in triple box, but he is the last man standing. He posts up quite the comeback, though. He's on for a 4K. He's on for the ace. And he's not going to quite make it happen. Kadian holds on with the USP. It's going to be incredibly close, but he has the defuse. And Herog with a successful retake. It's such a nice try from Dupree, but he stumbles at the last hurdle. Down, however. I, I think he's making a damn good argument for himself. He's about to put under pressure once again. And Magisk, he comes up huge. The MAC-10 is enough to double up. He's going to retrieve an extra gun, or S-Tag is at least. Tessus now has to try and do anything. What? A straight MAC-10 rush. But at this point, he is playing for exit frags. He is playing to save. Maybe getting 10 momentarily. He's being peeked in, misses his shot, gets punished. And Nico will not be long for this world either. He goes down. The fact that Stown and Nico are both fifteen and sixteen hundred dollars, this may be a force buy. Because even if they were to save, there's not really any decent buy on the horizon for a while. Could be their undoing. We've seen this before. They bypassed pistols last time. Heroic go for the gamble. Staff will save, and the gamble pays off. Oh, it's a massacre. Flashbang is good. There's no time in our Astralis. They desperately try to scramble away and hold on to what little they have left. Glaive dies after time. They're okay with that. Obviously, they have tons of cash at their disposal. But that gamble stack, phenomenal on this map so far. 11 and 2. He'll be pressured. 30 seconds. Bound. Back of the site. Grenade tossed in. Lands on nobody. Cadian now being tagged and forced away. But Stown is now going to show his hand as Cadian draws away fire. Stown can pincer in. But the two B defenders have fallen on their sword. And being put to the sword now by Device and Magus. An excellent take. An excellent hold in the end. And Astralis once again strike back. 5-5. Five, five. And it comes down to a retake. Weaponry has been retrieved as well. So S-Tank and Device both with rifles. The pre on a Deagle is not something to ever take lightly. Here comes the utility though. They do have kits available, but that's all the grenades they have left. A single smoke and it's the pre to take first contact. But the spray from Device grabs two. It's left on to Stown versus S-Tank. Looking to try and take down his old teammate. And he will do just that. It may be nobody surviving, but the bomb doesn't quite go off. At the same time, I do wonder if there is any 
bad blood in the sense of wanting to beat out this man. They'll get plenty of chances by the looks of it with changes coming in Counter-Strike, but here we go. S-Tag versus his old roster. A chance to pad the stats to slam them into the ground. However, it is going to be a kill coming up, but no weapon retrieved. So ultimately, for the side of Astralis, they won't mind too much. Now the T is starting to encircle. They look to envelop and erode the site. Flashes on top of Molotovs, on top of Bullet. But it's Borup that comes out ahead. He gets himself two kills. He's had so many troubles on this B site. But is that the valiant attempt that they've been waiting for? Better late than never on the CT side. Two play two with 35 seconds. Ooh. It's a bit of an awkward battle and utility just isn't there anymore. In fact, they've left S-Tag behind. The time now ticking. No kit either. Sure, they've got utility, but that may not matter if the time continues to fall. There's nothing that they can do. They need to find this man clearing the wrong angle to start so much damage done as well. A smoke expended. A flash goes out. It's actually the low man defusing. The shot's being spammed through. He's so close to getting the kill. He doesn't even know that they're still defusing and Heroic have got it. Surely! No! He found the kill at the very last second. Glaber's won the round. Absolutely ridiculous. They may have to burst out with ruthless aggression. An aim on top of it and the ferocity comes down range. It's Storm that gets the first. Before Tess is suppressed, good flashbang. Bomb spills out and Glaive landing nothing but headshots. Stout, who got the first kill on Heroic, the only kill, as a matter of fact. Now, as to whether the four player storm as he gets enveloped from every single angle, every feasible corner has CTs waiting. Headshot comes in, keeping it alive for a few more seconds, but down he goes. 10-6. And in fact, an extra couple of AKs just to sweeten the deal. The boost, though, for Device. That duel between those two players continues. This has been a battle that I've thoroughly enjoyed. A man who's been a top three player in the world multiple times and or someone who I think will be there in the future for sure. Device, though, this time is starting to style on his opponents. He may only have a FAMAS in this round and his team may have nothing, but he's playing this like it's a solo AWP. That's his third kill in this round. He's had multiple duels versus better weaponry and he's won every single one of them. This man is in superb form. Mages, headshot Nico. And Alcadian. Swarm from the side, it's not only a round to Astralis, it's one that they keep all five players alive and they trade up to three AKs. But coming up, there will finally be a buy for Heroic. Should be a massacre. Will be a massacre. Dupree and Glaive put down the bullets. Nico at least gets one, but then it's pretty comfortable in the end. Here on Inferno, otherwise we're heading to Vertigo. I know it seems a bit grim and a bit drab, but that's just how the nature of this has gone so far. Glaive getting warned, goes back in for seconds, gets punished for greed. Not always good. And that puts Mages in an awkward position, and he needs the cavalry to arrive. He needs the reinforcements. This leaves A very scarce of players, but it is device. And let's be honest, he's basically a one-man army at this point. A one-man wrecking crew. It doesn't matter if he has the AWP or the Deagle, he will put you down. And he's put this into a two-on-two. A winnable round for Astralis. Smoke thrown deep, and now Magis will reveal his position. He's going to clear that pit, but actually Nico wins the duel. And now it's left all onto Dupree. A 1v2. The first is so clinical, though, that all is left is Nico on just 12 HP. And he's picked up an aid. He's found the golden ticket to dunk him straight out of the round. It is perfect for Dupree. The stars align once again. Tess is on 26 HP. He may have to stay on the site for fear of getting grenaded or picked off on the cross, but he just about slithers away. And now they play together. Nico with the first heroic, looking to hold the line, looking to try and build their way back into Inferno. But most of this will have to come down to Nico. He is the healthy of the two players, but Tess is with a Galil, and there's Nico to finish it off with the AK. Successful 2v3. As you highlighted, although it wasn't a full investment, there are enough pieces 
to make this a very deadly last 25 or so seconds if they don't deal with these threats but Magisk has now been nullified Dupree holding the line with Ooh. the eagle and it's headshot after headshot 15 seconds left Dupree oh. another headshot this man is unrelenting the Danish demolisher is in full commission and it's Dupree behind the wheel. He just has to stay alive and this round goes their way and Kadian has no idea that he's on the site. That oh. is outrageous again. This is theirs to lose. Oh, I think you can tag and bag this. Honestly, Tom, I, I think that was just the last draw device what a flick coming in from s attack he's got two in this round may very well double up 15 seconds to go heroic need to make moves and s attack has the perfect angle to spray and perforate through not just the smoke but the head of tessis and that will be all she wrote for map two we head to vertigo again between these two giants no kits on astralis they also have read this perfectly. They rotate into position. Test is tank down to five. Storm going in, spinning around, trying his best to tank all the bullets and absorb them for the rest of his team. But in the blink of an eye, Dupree and Device. This round is as good as a bonus round as you're going to get in Counter-Strike nowadays. Only damage done though to the members of Astralis again is the all-out brawl on the ramp and this time, well, Espeg at the moment's the only survivor and he does not last long. It is a flawless take, an almost flawless take, as Device will at least dunk out one. He's been superb throughout this series, but this might be a bridge too far, although Tessa slightly caught out. They managed to retrain, retain at least the site, but the fact is the tease really hoping that Cadian isn't a scroll wheel jumper. Which could you imagine like sneaking into that angle and just knocking your scroll wheel and flying off the map? Terrorists win. <laughs> but are there more in the tank for Astralis? Are there more big moments in this best of three yet? Down, not fragged, but heavily tagged, and that grenade banking off the wall nearly finishes him off. More damage inflicted, but Dupree is coming under heavy duress. And eventually he crumbles alongside Glaive. Who did get one just before he was put six foot under. And Device has to go in. A 1v2. Oh, they so nearly lined up for the collateral, but instead he misses both of them. 15 seconds left. Misses another shot. That probably cost him his life, but indeed it does. It has to be frustrating. You can see. Next attack now. Flames behind him. Flames ahead of him in an island of security for now, decides that he doesn't want to feel safe. He wants to take the fight to the tees. And a flurry of action sees him fall, but doing a lot of damage on his way out. Astralis still trailed by a player, but in all of that confrontation, they forced the tees over towards the A side of the map, the beep side of the map, pardon me. The after plant will be allowed. No kits for the remaining players of Astralis, so they've got to move quickly. Barup might be for free, but if anything, Dupree might have just stand on his head. He's completely missed him. And Magic's coming in from the same angle. It's the same spot. He killed both of them, just sat down, waiting patiently. 55 HP lost, purely off utility. But he has spotted one player before the smoke fully plumes and denies vision. S attack through the smoke into Burrup. Three players stacked at the back of the site. And this post plant, although Heroic will be able to retreat back into good positions, judging from how much utility there is, and they have a kit, it is looking like it will be a difficult ask for them to hold it. So Cadian plays up close. He knows they have to do something risky. They have to roll the dice, gamble, hope for the best. It could be a back-breaking moment for Astralis, but Cadian continues to push forward. He still has so much HP. He's playing with the minds of all of Astralis, but finally he will fall on his sword. This battle for ramp has not been one that's been too successful for Astralis so far, and their retake in the last round was fantastic. Here comes the push once again, though. Barup looking to try and lead the charge. He's done well with the entries. Another one comes up to his name, but the vice is there for the trade. The juggling of weapons doesn't work out for him, and Glaive just runs in for the man that is Tessus. 
S tag with a quick trade will keep it even. The fact is, it's even into a retake. He's hungry. He wants this round. He wants that momentum to quickly snap back into shape. It's only Astralis's first in five. Cadian, flick on to Dupree, a freebie. They're going for the defuse in the month. No. no. Oh no, he may even get this, but Cadian whips out the Glock. Glock blocks S tag down. It's not advisable, but if fighting the ramp isn't working, it might have to be the thing you go for. Yeah, adjustments need to be made, and perhaps this is the adjustment they were looking for. Major Skinesta tag taking aggression, but it's more controlled and subdued. Don't fully invest behind it. And test this out into the open. We'll be caught by the Molotov of Glaive. One of the better starts that the Astralis have really had in... I mean, really, since the beginning of the map. They were 3-0 up. Since then, it's been 8-1. And it looks like they'll be uh, getting a fifth round. Although Spawn does have the bomb under control. Did get slightly tagged by that Molotov. Has that given his position away? I believe it has. They know exactly where he is. Living on borrowed time, and they do collect. They will not check the sandbags. This position could be so massive. Esther Tag just has to wait, but he only gets one. They check it late, but they do get it done. And now Glaive holds his own for three triple sprays. Beautiful play from Glaive. And that should be the round determining moment. That should be the round going the way of Astralis after conceding the first. Glaive goes down to the hand of Cadian. Two players left alive and Magus strikes from above. But they haven't fully pushed in just yet. Flashbang doesn't really affect Dupree whatsoever. And that's the freest of kills that he could really ask for. He's drawn away the fire to allow Glaive to show his hand on the pillar, but he's sprayed out. Dupree with a wall bang onto Cadian. 15 seconds to go. The T's need to get on the site, but Dupree's orc is far too potent, far too deadly. Second half will read 8-7 in favor of Heroic. And a smoke banked off the wall. Down, hoping for a miracle through the smoke. He still hasn't come back after Inferno. He's someone we've relied on throughout this series and Nico straight through the smoke. He's going to pick one off. He did well in the first half over on B. He's kept things even for now. Fact is though, any rotation here, that would be a long one. In fact, a little bit of hunting seemingly coming in. Maybe some smokes being picked up by Nico. He's going to line it up and throw one right over to try and give them a little bit of presence back onto the bomb. Now, the kit is actually in a horrible position. It makes Tessa's peak even more risky, but we're up. Not only gets the kill, but he's grabbed the kit. The man might have just won the round for the team. It's left all onto Dupree. He's sticking the bomb. Two kills come up. He doesn't get the third. But we're up. That is a mammoth play. Not only does he get two kills, but he steals the kit from under Astralis's nose. Such a filthy position from Stown. It nets him a kill, but the fact is, I have just paved a path for them onto this site. The rotation's quick. Glaive still has a rifle. Cadian peeks in. I think he was meant to be cannon fodder. Instead, he manages to pick off his opponent. S tag, though. This is tasty. Two digs, but he doesn't expect Cadian. A rotation in. Now the MP9 of Cadian is perched up close to deliver some serious ferocity. This is where the fire rate of that MP9 could be so vitally important. Going in on Esther Tag, he can try and somehow escape on 7 HP. That forces Magus to respect this angle. In doing so, he gives himself up to Storm. You can see the difference that kill would have made if he finished off the frag on Cadian. Great additions that that will bring. Cadian looking down, anticipating the flashbang flicks up, but misses. However, Tessis will not. And even though the site has been taken, keeping players alive allows a foundation to pivot off when it comes to the post plant. Cadian keeping them busy while Nico goes down, absorbing the bulk of those bullets. But Tessis is still alive after picking up the first frag, albeit on 22. So although it's looking a bit dire for Astralis, a little bit scrappy. The HP's not great, but Tessis goes straight in for two more. He has no fear. Nobody on Astralis is being respected today from Tessis. And now that five round lead becomes six. 
as another round defeat would put them in slightly more awkward waters and potentially give away for Astralis back in. But S-Tag, well, I mentioned, he was top fragging. They starting to slip. A device has met the same fate, Nico again. That's two headshots through smoke to start off this round. They can't even see him, and he's getting rid of them. And I said that there's been a couple of unsung heroes, even from us. This time, they're starting to really shine as Nico closes out this round with a triple. It really is how the, the rankings are working at the moment. Oh, it's so tight at the top. No doubt. Cadian aggression gets dealt with accordingly from Device. His opposite number rings true. Tessis caught no man's land. And the machine gun fire dispatches of him. There will be no ceasefire sign today. And Astralis, hot off the back of those two entries, they go in for the plant. But we sort of saw it in the last half as well. They win the initial pistol. In fact, they actually made a nice little sandwich. 30 seconds. No real time to spare. No chances of mistakes. If they slip and slide, it's likely a, a capsizing ship that cannot be steered away from the rocks. It's a one-for-one -one trade early on. Postplant comes in, but Scorn connecting the shot. Can't keep himself alive. Oh no. That smoke miss. Did it not extinguish underneath? I didn't see it from his perspective, but he burns alive. He pulled the smoke out. But May Jessica's gone down, maybe. A slight mistake won't end up mattering, and it's S attack. The man that is destined for Cloud9 that maybe can deliver from the heavens and open up and fire down some righteous fury upon Heroic, but it won't be happening. They have a kit, they have time, and they have four match points. Many would have been favoring Astralis to take this game. Device protruding around the corner has Thorn to contend with, and he comes out second best, as does Magus. Esetna keeping the dream alive. Nine HP, but his teammates are falling around him like flies, and now it's all on Glaive. He has the bomb, and he's rushing straight towards the B site. But Cadian is late here in wait. Gets smoked off. Hasn't pulled the trigger on the AWP just yet. And Glaive is putting himself into the chance of a post plant, but it gets taken away. And Cadian is loving it. They've secured their spot against Vitality. <laughs> the stars have fallen from the sky, and it's the heroes who rise to take themselves through to the grand final. It is a huge achievement for the side of Heroic. They have beaten their Danish counterparts once again.